Hello, welcome to Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley's spot on YouTube. I'm Pastor Drew Hayes Charmley. This is another video in the series of Welsh churches, aka what Pastor did on his holidays. And um, this is the Church of St. Moigan, I'm probably mispronouncing that, Flannery. Uh, this is the mother church of Ruthin. Before there was a church at Ruthin, Flanreath was the church for what is now the town. Ruthin has grown, Ruthin has its own church now, the Norman church, but this is the Welsh church. This is where presumably St. Moigan settled all those many centuries ago, probably 5th, 6th, 7th century. Um, so let's have a look around the outside of the church first and then we'll go inside. It's quite typical for this sort of little church not to have a, a tower or any external division of nave and chancel. You can see it's entered from the west end. You've got a little window and the, the door below. There's a west gallery here. A uh, number of uh, these table tombs. This is uh, for Humphrey. I can't see the full of his name, but he was a surgeon of Ruthin who died in 1832. Remember, this is the, the mother town of Ruthin, the mother church of Ruthin. And so it's memorials. You can see the, the curve of the graveyard here. Um, its memorials reflect the town as well as this little village. You see there the ancient churchyard cross. And as we come around, you'll see the the fact that this has, in fact, a porch. The porch is not used today. It's not the... Here we go, past one of the old yew, yew trees. Um, there's the churchyard cross, and there is the south side with its porch, with the porch with its doors closed, although they are screened doors rather than solid doors. And it's very typical of this sort of building. It's long, low structures, low structure. You've had a number of churches like this in this area. One of the, the variations, of course, is to, to double them. But they're all these, long, these low stone boxes, and quite often with this simple porch at one end. And the churchyard cross, its top is missing, but that is definitely a medieval cross shaft possibly 15th century. The building itself has obviously been rebuilt in about the 15th century. Um, as a lot of the church around here were because there was a lot of money around in those days. In fact, you'll find Victorian restorations again because there was money then. There were people who were both willing and able to do church restorations, which just wasn't the case in other periods. So the 15th century Churchyard Cross, church, and the, the quiet church. Our church is quite overgrown. This is a, a deliberate thing. It's to encourage wildlife. It's also, of course, to make things a lot easier for whoever does the mowing. Um, here we are, and the porch. And the porch, as we go to the porch, we find that it, it is open. And it has a nice 15th century door. And a nice, nice bit of old ancient woodwork up there. The little churchyard with all the old memorials. And again, that, that cross in the Middle Ages, they didn't really go in for churchyard. Um, they would go into gravestones the way they would later. Um, that's why you don't find many medieval gravestones. Rather, they would have um, wooden crosses, wooden markers, or simple markers in the ground or no marker at all but in the center you'd have a, a single memorial a single cross for everybody who um was buried there we won't go further into the churchyard it is very overgrown i think they are they're taking wild churchyard to a bit of an extreme around here <laughs> that's one way you could put it anyway so we'll we'll head inside and have a bit of a look around and see what see what we can see 
And so here we are on the inside, and you can see again, it is very simple form. It has a, a rude screen, a chancel screen, separating the chancel the east, at the east end from the nave. But there's no division in the building. It's simply that this wooden screen tells you which is which. There's memorials to a variety of families, most notably the Thelwall family, who were very influential and important in this area. And we'll have a look around. We won't be able to see all of it because of restrictions at the moment, but if we can have a look around and note some of the more important features of this building. And so here we are looking east, and you can see there very much that uh, rood screen, that medieval form, and above there is a medieval roof, and that roof is 15th century. It's a very beautiful example of work. It's not very bright at the moment here, it's raining outside a bit, but you can see there the, uh, the old timbers and its cross bracing and, and all that kind of thing, and the screen. And then as we we turn around, we have these memorials, there's the war memorial, and um, the memory of the men from this parish who gave their lives in the Great War. And there's got a lieutenant, uh, two lieutenants, one of them Manchester Regiment, Lieutenant uh, Lacombe, or Lacoma, Lieutenant Evans with the Welsh Regiment, Sergeant, a Gunner, and then all the rest are privates. Um, You'll notice the same names repeat. It doesn't necessarily mean the same families, of course, because they're common Welsh names. There we have uh, Sacred of the Memory of Hugh Jones, Esquire of Woodlands in the parish of Flan Fulrog. Um, Woodlands today is a hotel, a very nice one, I hasten to add. Um, Sacred of the Memory of the Reverend Hugh Jones, a um, elder son of Roger Jones of Kaya Gross, of Kaya Gross in this parish, Gent, and 11 years vicar of Northrop in the county of Flint. It's a very nice church, Northrop. Died June 18th, 1825, age 76. Roger Jones, later of Kaya Gross in this parish. Third son of Hugh, third son of Evan Jones. And again, all these memorials, a, the font is a, a play in 19th century example, but quite a good one. And of course, notably, we've got stained glass here, um, the transfiguration in the middle, of course, uh, John, who is always depicted as a young man because of the tradition that he was, uh, that he died about the year 100, which of course would mean that if he wanted it to, in the year 30 odd, he must have been fairly young. Um, more of these splendid memorials, uh, and Robertses and fell walls and, and the pulpit, and again that uh, rood screen. The screen is medieval, it has been somewhat renewed over the years, but it is medieval. Um, Georgiana Neville, only daughter of George Jones, surgeon of Ruthin. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And we have here a West Gallery. The gallery would have been used for uh, singers and a rustic band back in the day. Um, later on it may have been used for an organ, but today there is a harmonium in the nave. And no, no organ. And you can see through the screen the memorials to members of the Thelwall family. Um, it's a, a magnificent building, and the sort of thing that you you look at and you think, well, this is something of great beauty, a building of great beauty. Also notice that the pews have doors. Um, this allows you to keep unruly children inside during the service. And no, it's, it's something you think, well, why would you need to? But the reality is that children have been known to, to get out. And you know, we had one um, who got out and made a beeline for the open door. And we live on, um, and our church is on a main road. So that could be a little bit, um, a little bit dicey, shall we say. Um, I 
And as we said, the chancel is the many, many ways the most interesting part. You'll see here on the on the screen, first of all, these medieval carvings. It's a, a green man there, I, I believe, and, and the tracery or Joneses. And here we have the Thell Walls, John Thell Wall of Bartholomew Park Esquire. Um, here is Ambrose Thell Wall, yeoman of the robes to King James, in pension to King Charles, again yeoman of the robes to Prince Charles, till yielding to age and troublesome times, he retired to the place of his birth, where having ever been a great lover and supporter of his family, he died 15th of August, anno 1653. He enjoys uh, and enjoys the blessing. He much uh, desired to be buried in the place, in the sepulchre of his fathers. We have another Thal Wall memorial, and the whole that is Richard Roberts indeed. That is a fell wall because all their children are labelled um, Purse, Ambrose, Beavis, Simon, Thomas, etc. Um, little bit of stained glass, more fell walls, and we look through to the west end. So that is the interior of this pleasant little church with its big windows and its fell wall memorials and its west gallery. You can see you've got a, a reading desk here inside for the, the clergyman. The screen is, as you can see, plainer on the inside and the outside. And there again, the ceiling, much of a piece with the screen. Well, let's pop outside again and look at the other side and maybe have some closing remarks. Here we are again outside. It's raining properly now. The, the clouds have come down off the mountains and are unburdening themselves upon the plain. Here is the north side. and In this case, because there's no door on the north side, um, there probably would have been one, but it's long since gone, we have these big windows. Excuse me. Um, as we stroll out here, as the road goes ever on and on back to the place where it began. Um, and here we have the north side and a little bell cot. Again, it's one of these very simple little little veil of cluid churches. You've got your big ones and your little ones. This is the little one, and yet the town of Ruthin counts this building as its mother church, the church from which it sprang. And so, San Reed, Mother Church of uh, Ruffin. And this is the last stop for today, although there will be more days and another day of my little holiday. All this will be posted after the holiday, so I don't mind telling people I'm on a little holiday. But it's only, only a couple of hours from Stoke to here. Um, but it's nice to get away for a bit and to enjoy the, the beauties of Wales and the beauties of uh, a little bit of Welsh rain, glorious, soft, refreshing rain. Well, I hope you find it interesting and uh, you know, some of these churches are full of treasures. Some of them, like this one, are a little, little plainer and yet they've all got their beauties. They're all, this is in the 15th century, it's restored and updated over the years and still the place of worship today. Well, thank you for watching, and may God bless us all, and keep us in his love, for Christ's sake. Amen.